Hi guys, welcome to another Elementor video. This is another in our series of Elementor for Beginners. Today we're going to show you how to create a header for your page using a header module. And we'll also demonstrate how you can save this to your library and reuse it on other pages. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new page. Now let's call it my Elementor header. Obviously, I'm sure you have a better heading than that. Over in the template on this side here, if yours is closed up, it's under summary here. Just hit the little chevron under the page tab. I'm going to click on where it says default template. I'm going to use an Elementor full width. That will give us a blank full width page and it'll keep our header on there. Elementor canvas will give us a blank page with no header and a default template will give you a sidebar type box layout. So I'm going to use Elementor full width. I'm going to save that draft. I'm going to hit the edit with Elementor button. Okay. And on your first page, you'll see all the available widgets down here. And there's plenty of them with Elementor. We're using Elementor Pro on this. And all these videos for our Elementor, we're using the free Halo theme for Elementor, which I would recommend if you're using Elementor because it's optimized for it. Okay, so we want to put a heading in here. There's a heading right there, the top one on the right. I'm just going to drag it over. I'm going to drop it in there and it pops it up here. Now, a neat little trick that you can do here. If you want to, you can use dynamic content. Over here is a little disk type icon. If you click on it, you can choose a date, an excerpt. What we want really is the post title or the page title, and it'll put in whatever the title of the page is. Now, this is great if you're going to be using this header on other pages, because as soon as you put it in there from your library, it'll have the correct text up there. As this is a page header, I don't want to particularly put a link in there. I'm happy for it to be in H2. So if we go over to our styling, I'm going to pop it in the middle. Choose your text color. I'll leave it as it is for the moment. I'm going to turn it white when I put a background on there. Typography, if we click here, you can choose whatever font you want. And there's plenty to choose from here. And we leave it just like that. The size that you actually want to make it. Font weight, you can make it skinnier. Or bolder if you want to. I'm happy with that. If you want to transform it, you can transform it uppercase, lowercase. Uppercase is capital, obviously. Lowercase is all small letters. You can capitalize, which will put a capital letter on the front of each word there. Or normal, which, as you can imagine, is normal. Default styles, they got normal, italic, and oblique. Don't want any of that. You can put the normal text decorations under there, like underline, overline, line through, or none. Just to demonstrate, there's an underline for you. I'm happy for it to be on the default. Line height is actually the space that it's going to take up. For instance, if I drag this up, you'll see it getting deeper. If I pull it down, you'll see it getting skinnier. If you don't like what you've done, just select it, delete it. It'll go back to how it was. Letter spacing is self-explanatory. Obviously, that's the space between the letters. Word spacing, again, self-explanatory. You can spread those words out if you want to. Again, I'm going to leave those all on the defaults. Now let's close that up. Take stroke. Stroke is a little line that you can put to make your heading stand out a bit more. Just hit the little pencil. By default, it's black. If I pull this up, you'll see that it gets a little line around it. And on light headings like that, that's a nice feature. The more you pull it up, obviously, the thicker that stroke's going to get until it gets absolutely crazy. And you can play with different colors and get some effects and things. I'm happy to leave that as it is. Text shadow, again, that's fairly self-explanatory. Just puts a little bit of shadow there. Horizontal is going to move it left and right. Vertical, obviously, is going to move it up or down. I don't think I really want any of that, but it's a nice thing to have. If you don't want it, just hit that little return arrow there. It'll set it back to the default for you. Great. Well, we've got the actual page heading in there. It's dynamic, so it's going to update on each page, but not really interesting. So let's go in the section and make it a little bit more interesting. 
click on the little dots in the middle there. As you can see, it takes you to the section itself. Now, it doesn't matter too much for what we've got here, but you can have the content boxed, which if I roll over means it stops here. Or you can make it full width, and I'll make it the full width of the header there. Like I say, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference here. Same with the columns gap, because we've only got one. You can give it a default height and vertical line and hide the overflow and things, but none of this is going to matter to us today because we're just making a simple header. So let's go over to the style and get a little bit creative with it. In the background type, you've got classic, which is a photo or a color. You can have a gradient. You can actually put a video back there, or you can have a slideshow if you want to. I'm going to stick with the classic. I'm just going to add an image. And let's throw in a dark sort of image. And this is a great feature of Elementor. It's letting us know that this image doesn't contain an alt tag. Now, all images should have an alt tag. If we click back on this image, over here is the alt tag. And it's really for people with poor eyesight that use screen readers. It'll tell them what the image is. A lot of people use it for keyword stuffing. I'm not sure if that still works. And I will say, whatever it is, space robot. Once you put that in there, that's disappeared. They've got an image optimizer here. It's telling us that it's a bit too big. I'm going to leave it as it is. And you can see it in there, great. If you want to, when you hover over it, you can put a completely different image in or something else. I'm going to leave it just as it is there too. Now, position-wise is where it is. By default, it's sort of aligning it top left. I'm going to have mine center center. The attachment, you can choose whether have it fixed position, let it scroll or default. I haven't got any scrolling room, so I can't demonstrate that. But fixed position, basically, if I was to scroll up and down the site, that would stay where it is. Scroll would have a little scroll. I don't want it to repeat. I want it to cover the entire section right there. Fantastic. Now you've got various scrolling effects you can apply to it here. Vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, transparency, blur, and scale. I'm not going to put any of those on today. This is going to be a pretty simple header that we're going to have for most of our pages. What I will do, though, is have a little background overlay. I'm going to use a color for this. Just click on the color field. Select the color that you want. Let's use a blue. And it's overlaid it there. Let's move that just a little bit darker. And you can choose the opacity here. The more you slide it down to the left, the less of that color you will see. That kind of works for me. And if you want to, again, you can change it on hover. If we go to hover this time, again, I'll use classic. Let's use a black color, perhaps. As you can see, when I hover over, it changes from a blue to a black. Let's take that opacity down just a little bit. There we go. We've got a little bit happening there. Fantastic. Okay, on this particular one, I'm not going to use a border or a shape to divider. Let's go over to advanced now because I want this thing to be a little bit deeper. We can do that with padding. I'm going to uncheck the chain. If you don't uncheck the chain, it'll do all four of these boxes at once. I'm going to add, say, 50 pixels to the top and 50 pixels to the bottom. Obviously, fix yours how you want to. You can add motion effects if you want to, such as entrance animations. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. I just want it as a header, as I said before. You can make it sticky if you want to. So it sticks to the top of the page. When you roll up the page, I've got no scroll room. It'll stay there if it's sticky. And we're good. I'm just going to change that text color to a white. I didn't change that before because it would have disappeared into the white background. So to do that, just roll over it. Go to the little pencil icon on the right hand side here. It'll take you back to the heading. Here's the text color. I'm just going to make it white. Fantastic. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. And we might want to use this on different pages. So let's save it to the library. I'm going to go up to the section itself. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to hit save as template. 
save your section to the library. We'll call it heading. And I'm going to hit the save. Fantastic. And there it is. And it tells us we've saved the section. I've got one more here. And it's telling us that it's just a header. When you're happy with everything you've done, go down to the bottom here and hit publish. Or if you don't want to publish it right away, hit save draft. And you can preview your changes with a little eyeball right there. And there it is. There's our little header right there. As you can see, it's got that little hover effect over it. Okay. Let's show you how to load it from the library. Let's create a new page. We want to add this to our new page. So I'm going to go down to new page. I'm going to call this my second page. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the same template. Elementor full width. I'm going to save the draft. And I'm going to edit with Elementor. And here's our new page. To load from a library, go down to the little file type icon, add template. You want to go to my templates. Tab at the top there. There it is, heading. Remember we called it heading. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say insert. It says it's going to override the design layout. That's fine. There's nothing on this page. You can choose whether to apply or not apply. If you're not sure, hit don't apply. That way, nothing is going to get overwritten on your page. And there it is. And as you can see, as we put a dynamic title in there, it's already put the title of the page in there. Again, when you're happy, hit publish or save draft. And visit the page. There it is. So there you go, guys. Of course, styling is entirely up to you, but that's how you can create a header that you can use across your site and save it to your library using a little bit of dynamic content there. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them or make a little demo video like this. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Day.